OK. In this video, I'm going to do every exam question that has ever been asked on proof, which is in the algebra topic that we've got here. And like I always say in these videos, if you do want this document to use yourself, it is linked in the description below. OK, so algebra questions proof. I'm actually going to start with probably maybe one of the hardest ones that there is. And it's from summer 2019 and it's a non-calculator one. There's a bit of a clue here about evens and odds logic that we've got. Now it says, given that n can be any integer such that n is greater than one, prove that n squared minus n is never an odd number. Now, because it's an evens and odds logic, this one, we kind of can't really do anything to this. It's like, how are you gonna show that it's not going to be an odd number? So I'm gonna start with n squared minus n, and I'm actually just gonna do something to it. When I look at this, I think, okay, the only thing I can do here is factorize. So I'm gonna do n and n minus one. Now, if n is a number, and this is n minus one, this is one less than this one. In other words, n and n minus one are consecutive numbers. They are consecutive, which means that they are next to each other. If they are consecutive numbers, this means that one must be even and one must be odd. This means one is even and one is odd. We also know that an even multiplied by an odd is always equal to an even. Hence, n squared minus n is never odd. Now, some people feel like this isn't a proof because it's like I didn't really do any algebra. This is a great proof because we've said that they must be consecutive. So one must be even and one must be odd. And if you do an even times an odd, you get an even. You can just test that, I don't know, like four times seven is 28. It's always gonna be the case that it's even. Hence, n squared minus n is never an odd number. So there are different ways of doing this. I think this is probably the easiest one, which is just talking about that um, it's a product of two consecutive integers and must be even as either n or n must n minus one must be even. If you wanted to, you could do something that in A level is called proof by exhaustion. You exhaust all of the options. You test it out if n was an odd number and you see that it's even and you test it out if n was an even number and you see that it's even. And then you have that kind of concluding statement. That's probably the only question I found that looks like this. The rest of them all tend to be this kind of classic algebraic one that I think you'll probably be most familiar with from your lessons at school. So it says that n is an integer greater than 1. We don't really need to worry about that too much. And it says prove algebraically that n squared minus 2 minus n minus 2 squared is always an even number. So I'm going to start with my n squared minus 2. And then what I'm going to do with my n minus 2 squared is I'm going to expand those brackets of n minus 2 squared. Now you should be able to expand these pretty quickly, but I'm going to do them a little bit more slowly. So I'm going to have the n times n is n squared. We get a minus 2n, a minus 2n, and a plus 4. So I'm going to keep working on this that we've got. So that's an n squared minus 2 minus, and inside the brackets, it's n squared minus 4n plus 4. Now this is where you need to make sure that you're doing the, ne the negative outside the bracket correctly. This negative is going to apply to all three things, meaning this will be negative, this will be positive, and this will be negative. So we get minus n squared plus 4n and minus 4. It's kind of like expanding the brackets and imagine that there's a negative 1 here and think about how that behaves with everything inside. Now this n squared subtract n squared is going to cancel out, which then leaves us with 4n minus 6. Now to show that it's an even number, we want to show that it is something that can be multiplied by 2. So if I take a factor of 2 out, I can then just write it as 2n minus 3. And I'm just going to say here, hence n squared minus 2 minus n minus 2 squared is always even because of the fact that it's being multiplied by 2 there. Okay, let's see how they did this. So they did come up with the 2 brackets 2n minus 3, and it says it's always even since they are both even numbers, you could have said, or we could have said that they are multiples of 2, or even just this. This is always even that we've got here. So I guess I should say is always even as 2 brackets 2n minus 3 is always even just to make sure we get that communication mark at the end. Okay, another algebraic proof. It says, prove algebraically that the sum of these things is always a square number. So sum just means we're gonna add them together. I'm gonna do the long method, and if I have time, I might do the short method as well. So I'm gonna do a half n, n plus one, and I'm gonna add that to a half n plus one, n plus two, and I'm gonna just basically do all of the simplifying 
and show that it's a square number. So for the first part, it's going to be a half n multiplied by n, which is a half n squared, and then a half n multiplied by 1. And then for the next bit, I'm going to do these double brackets. So n times n is n squared, and then I'm going to have the 1 times n, the 2 times n, and the 2. I'll keep expanding these brackets. So I have a half n squared plus a half n. They didn't need any expanding. I then get another half n squared. Well, these are 3n, and I'm going to multiply that by a half. And 3 times a half is 3 over 2n. And then I have the half multiplied by 2, which is just 1. So doing a little bit of simplifying here, this a half n squared and this a half n squared just makes n squared. I've then got a half n plus 3 over 2n. Well, that's a half plus 3 halves. That's 4 halves, and 4 halves is 2. So I get n squared plus 2n, and then I get the plus 1 that we have at the end there as well. So I don't need these little red lines anymore. And then all I need to do is to try and show that this is a square number. So I now want to see if I can factorise this. And it's going to be a pretty good, easy factorising. It's just going to be n plus 1 squared, which is a square number, which is always square. So I'm going to say, hence, their sum is always a square number. It's good to have that conclusion statement. Now, I did say I was going to show you the quick way of doing this. If you are good at factorizing, you might see that you could try and factorize this beginning expression that we have here. The thing that they have in common, and I'm going to get rid of all of this at the end, they have a half and an n plus 1 each. They have a half and an n plus 1 each. So I'm going to start by writing a half and the n plus 1. And then what it needs for the remaining parts is going to need an n for this part. And then for this part, it needs an n plus 2. So we end up with a half n plus 1, 2n plus 2. And if I multiply the half by this bracket, I just get n plus 1 multiplied by n plus 1, which is n plus 1 squared. Hence, it is a square number. So if you're good at factorising and recognising what they've got in common, you could do that method. But I'm going to get rid of all of that because I'm just going to leave it with kind of the classic method that we might have for this one. And I don't even really need to look at the mark scheme because the mark scheme is just going to show me exactly what we had here. Um, so it says, yeah, basically come down to n plus 1 squared, and we want to have an explanation as well. Prove that the square of an odd number is always one more than a multiple of 4. So the way that we represent an odd number is we say 2n plus 1, or we could say 2n minus 1. Now the reason this is the case is because if you take a number and you double it, you get an even, and if you add 1, you guaranteed that you get an odd so we want to find out the square of the odd number, and we want it to be one more than a multiple of 4. So when I do the double brackets on this, thinking about what this looks like, 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 1, you get a 2n times 2n, which is 4n squared. You get a 2n times 1, a 2n times 1, and a 1. So we get 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Now I want to show that it's one more than a multiple of 4. So I'm going to just concentrate on these beginning two bits that we've got right here. And I'm going to show that that is a multiple of 4. That is clearly a multiple of 4 if I take out a factor of 4. And then it is one more. So I can say this shows that it is always one more than a multiple of 4. And the examiner knows that this is what they're looking for, okay? The examiner knows they're looking for this kind of stuff. So you don't need to say, oh, when you times it by 4, that makes it a multiple of 4. Oh, and then you add 1 to it, so that means... I mean, it's kind of obvious. This is multiply a multiple of 4, and this is one more than it. So let's have a look and just double-check the way they did it. So it does say a concluding statement that it's one more than a multiple of 4. You don't even need to have that because it's in brackets here. Um, but we got that all correct. Another algebraic one, it says, prove algebraically that the difference, that means subtract, between the squares, so it's going to be something squared, of any two consecutive odd numbers. So odd numbers, we just said, could be 2n plus 1. If you wanted to find the next odd number, it would be 2n plus 3, because obviously you go 2 above it. And if you wanted to find the previous odd number, it would be 2n minus 1. So these are our consecutive odd numbers. 
Now, I'm going to pick, I think, probably these two, because I just think these are going to be a bit easier to do the expanding, but you could do these two as the consecutive. Because it's the difference, I'm going to do the bigger one squared, take away the smaller one squared. So that is 2n plus 1 squared minus 2n minus 1 squared. Remember, you can do the double brackets if you need to for these. I'm going to go straight in without the double brackets. So it's going to be 4n squared. There's going to be a plus 2n and a plus 2n, which is plus 4n, and a plus 1. Now, for this next part, I do want to do it all in brackets. So there's going to be a 2n minus 1 squared. That's a 4n squared. There'd be a minus 2n and a minus 2n, which is minus 4n, and then a minus 1 times minus 1, which is a plus 1 that we've got here. So we want to show that this is always going to be a multiple of 8. So we get 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. The subtract is going to apply to all of these things. So it's going to be a negative, a positive, and then a negative. It flips all of those around. So it's going to be a minus 4n squared, a plus 4n, and a minus 1. And then look what happens. This 4n squared and this minus 4n squared are going to cancel. This 1 and minus 1 are going to cancel. And it just leaves us with 8n, which is always a multiple of 8, which is always a multiple of 8. And that's probably enough. So we don't need to repeat this whole thing as a sentence, but that's going to be enough here. So it wants us to say, oh, this is fine. So we can say uh, 8n. Great. So you get a correct simplified expression as a multiple of 8. All of that's in there. All of this extra stuff is if you used a slightly different approach, which is really why I'm wanting to do these videos, because I think the mark schemes are not the easiest things to use. Again, it's some algebraic stuff. This time it is the sum, which means it's adding of the squares of any two consecutive even numbers is always a multiple of four. So even numbers is 2n. You take any number and double it. The next one would be 2n plus 2. Then we would have 2n plus 4. So these are our consecutive evens. What we're going to do is just pick two of them. So I'm going to start off with my 2n squared, and it wants the sum with the next one. So 2n squared is 4n squared. 2n plus 2 squared. Well, the 2n times 2n is 4n squared. 2n times 2 is 4n. So we get a 4n and another 4n, which is 8n. And 2 times 2 is 4. So when all of this adds together, we get 8n squared plus 8n plus 4. And we want to show that it's a multiple of 4. So I'm going to take a factor of 4 out, which leaves us with 2n squared plus 2n plus 1. And we just need to say here, which is always a multiple of 4. Which is always a multiple of 4. Hence, we've proven that that statement is correct. So I think they'll probably come up to the same kind of thing with us. Um, yeah, we had this one. I think this one over here, the n squared plus 2n plus 2 squared, and we came up with this part here. So that's everything that there is on algebraic proof. Um, pretty straightforward. Maybe the first one was a little bit tricky. It's basically just can you expand and factorize? That's really all that they're looking for. So if you found this useful, please do like this video. Please do subscribe to my channel and share it with any of your friends who might find this helpful in their revisions of their GCSEs.